Airy TV news broadcast crew and I, Delit Sahaya, are now ready for your daily news briefing at 10.30 local time. But first, let us catch up with the major headlines. <music> Veteran freedom fighter Major General Hamid Kai Kare passes away. National school leaving examination will be held in, from 8th to 25th March. Putin says Russia will deploy troops in Finland border. Now it's now NATO. EU says starvation is being used as a weapon for war in Gaza. On our local news. Veteran freedom fighter Major General Hamed Karikare, commander of the Eritrean Naval Forces, passed away at the age of 73 due to illness. Major General Hamed Karikare joined the Eritrean Liberation Front in 1969 and in 1970 to the Eritrean Popular Forces and served his country and people in various capacities as well as member of the Central Committee of the EPLF. Following Eritrea's independence, Major General Karikare continued to serve his country and people with unwavering dedication, undertaking roles such as administrator of Denkalia, commander of the Eritrean Naval Forces, and coordinator of Eastern Front Development Sector. Major General Hamed Karikare is survived by his wife and four children. The funeral service is scheduled for Friday, 15th March, at 10 a.m. at the Asmara Martyr Cemetery. Expressing their profound sorrow over Major General Karikare's passing, the Ministry of Defense and the Eritrean Naval Forces extend their heartfelt condolences to his family and friends. Dr. Busarat Gavru, Director of the Testing Center at the Higher Education Institution and Research announced that the National School Leaving Examination 2024 will be conducted from 18th to 25th March across the country as well as in Riyadh and Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Busarat indicated that the examination will include 12 fields of study and will be provided from 28 centers at 30,779 students, including 50% females, are expected to take part. Dr. Busarat further noted that 60% of the examinees are regular students from Sawa High School and Technical Schools, while the rest are members of Eritrean Defense Forces, Eritrean Community Schools in Riyadh and Jeddah, and others. Dr. Busarat also called on the examinees to make psychological and physical preparation for the examination and strictly followed the guidelines. Nurse Emanuel Tolde, head of the Tinshai administrative area in Mansoura subzone, has reported that local health station is delivering exemplary pre- and postnatal care service. Nurse Emanuel highlighted the health station's commitment to pre- and postnatal care, noting that vaccination rate has been achieved a remarkable 100% coverage. Additionally, he mentioned that increased in trend in pre-martial counseling service. Furthermore, Nurse Emanuel commended the ongoing effort, environmental sanitation, and the distribution of threat bed nets aimed at reducing in incidence of communicable diseases, particularly malaria. Assistant nurse Asmela Shwaldaab added that the health station service extended beyond managing communicable diseases. It also offered routine vaccination for children, pre- and postnatal care, pharmacy services, and extends health service to subzones more isolated areas through deployment of barefoot doctors. Sports and Cultural Week has been organized in Golit Subzone from 1st to 3rd March involving students from all its schools. The event provided a platform for students to explore their talent and foster unity through shared experiences. Mr. Solomon Waldai, head of the Culture, Sports and Health in the Subzone, emphasized the event's role in talent identification among students. He highlighted its significance in encouraging experience sharing and bolstering unity among them. Mr. Abdullah Mahmoud, the head of the education office in the subzone, mentioned that the week was packed with various sports competitions and cultural activities, allowing students to showcase their diverse skills and cultural heritage. The event concluded with awards presented to the winners of the various sports and cultural contents celebrating their achievement and participation. 
The viewers will be back with the international news shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday he would redeploy military forces along the border with Finland in response to the countries becoming a member of the NATO alliance in April. Putin made the threat in an interview with the state media in response to what he said was Finland and Sweden's absolutely senseless step to the point of view of ensuring their own national interests. Finland and Sweden applied to join NATO together in 2022, shortly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Finland officially joined the military alliance last April, while Sweden was forced to wait until last week aimed holdouts by the Hungary and Turkey. Putin's com comment, rather made as Finnish Prime Minister Petteri Orpo told the European Parliament in Strasbourg that the rest of the bloc must follow Finland's example in ramping up security on its borders. Now, last news. Joseph Borrell described a lack of aid entering the territory as man-made disaster. A Spanish ship carrying desperately needed food supplies has left Cyprus for Gaza, but the UN says it cannot replace the delivery of aid by land. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has meanwhile vowed to press on with offensive in southern Gaza. The quickest, most effective way to get aid to territory is by the land, but aid agencies said Israeli's restriction means a fraction of what is needed in getting in. Attention has instead shifted towards alternative routines, including sea and airdrops. Dear viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's nice news. Let's have a quick recap if they like. Veteran freedom fighter Major General Hamid Karikare passed away. The National School Living Examination will be held from 18th to 25th of March. Putin says Russia will deploy troops to Finland border now. And EU says starvation is being used as a weapon of war in Gaza. That is all of our local and international news viewers. Thanks for watching and have a good night.